What's up guys, I'm Ben from Authentech and today's video is more of a fun experiment. I want to compare the camera of the latest OnePlus 6T versus OnePlus 5T, about one year generation change. I was curious of the results, is there gonna be that big of a difference? OnePlus is positioned as a budget friendly phone, even though they're still more mid tier. So if you're looking to get a budget phone, would it be worth getting the latest and greatest, maybe the 6T, or is the 5T still good enough, at least in reference to that camera. The 6T is their newest, latest phone, released November 6, 2018 for 549 bucks for the 6 gig or 579 for the 8 gig. The 5T was about one year before that, November 21, 2017, and it's currently 400 bucks on Prime. So some people are saying that the differences or improvements from phone generation to generation is getting smaller and smaller. So in regards to the camera specifically, I wanted to know how far have they come in one year approximately. And this might help someone who doesn't maybe need the latest and greatest, or is it worth the upgrade? We'll find out. Also, make sure you're following me on Instagram for all my behind the scenes shots. So let's jump right in, starting with some daylight photos. Things to be looking for is the dynamic range, quality and resolution, colors, contrast, and saturation. At first glance, a lot of the photos actually look pretty similar. Similar colors, similar contrast, even dynamic range. Both are doing a nice job of sharpness and clarity. White balance is slightly different in a few shots, but not by too much. If we do a big zoom in and use that secondary 20 megapixel lens on each phone and do a little pixel peeping, we can see the aliasing on the edges of that roof awning on the 5T where the edges are crisp and straight on the 6T. In this macro shot in the tree, for some strange reason, the 6T has this blurred out edges effect and the 5T is looking fine. In this flower shot, both cameras look similar and honestly pretty sweet shot on both. In this shot with the plant and the bright light bulbs underneath, I was surprised to see that the dynamic range is very similar between the two. Both are just slightly blowing out the highlights on the lights, but neither one can clearly beat out the other. Both cameras have a nice and large f1.7 aperture for natural looking bokeh and tight depth of field. One slight difference we can sometimes notice between the two primary lenses, the 6T has a 25mm focal length, the 5T has a 27mm, so it's just slightly tighter field of view. Both cameras support the portrait blur effect, and in this shot, the default edge outlining looks similar. Now, strange enough, let's jump to the front-facing cameras. I snapped a few more portraits here, and man, it missed the focus. It was inconsistent, rough edge outlining, over-softened shots on both cameras. I was pretty disappointed. Hopefully, this feature can be improved in the new 7 series coming up. Speaking of missed focus, this was a consistent theme throughout a lot of these tests, and you'll see it in the video as well. Now, both cameras are using phase detection autofocus, but like seen here, the 5T was missing that autofocus mark on my hand like 80 or 90% of the time. The 6T still missed the focus plenty of times, and it felt a little sluggish as well, but thankfully, it nailed it more often than not. This is another big wish list item that I have for OnePlus. Please lock down a good and consistent autofocus camera system. Now the 6T has that night mode and I was intrigued how it stacks up to the old school normal mode on the 5T in low light conditions. Well, in this shot, we can see just how much darker and more grain is in the 5T and the 6T has much better exposure. However, it sadly missed the focus point again, right dead center in camera frame. Now in the second test, the 5T is again super grainy, noisy and dark, but that's somewhat to be expected. However, the 6T, the shutter opened for just a quick second, then closed and produced a semi-dark blurry shot. Well, I tried it again and the second time, the shutter and processing time took much longer, about 10 seconds, and produced a much cleaner, better looking shot. So I'm starting to think that the single word that might wrap up this whole review is possibly inconsistent. Jumping back to video footage comparison, both cameras are recording here at 4K 30fps, but one key difference, the new 6T camera can shoot up to 4K 60fps, which is very awesome. Now the average person probably doesn't care too much about this, but for a full-time filmmaker like myself, this is an awesome feature to have. 
Now overall the sharpness and clarity look better on the 6T, but that's a good thing. Now onto one thing I just can't figure out, both cameras, mostly the newer 6T, has this crazy saturated teal and cyan color white balance thing going on in the footage. And this is all unedited straight out of auto mode on the camera. And I quick talked about this in my last big phone comparison between Pixel and iPhone and LG. Check it out in case you missed it. In this shot, you can clearly see where the off colors in my skin tones are when I point the camera back at myself and rotate around. Now, it was dang cold out there and it felt like my face was gonna fall off, but I promise you, it's truly not that red in real life. Oh, and don't worry if I forgot to mention, I made sure both phones were up to date with the latest updates. This is a walking stabilization test. We're still on rear facing cameras here and honestly the stabilization looks pretty similar to my eyes with the 6T possibly coming out just a smidge smoother. This is a jogging stabilization test. When I jump to jogging, both are doing a nice job of smoothing out the bumps and wobbles, but again, that 6T is slightly smoother, but still pretty close tie. And this is a front-facing video 1080p test, and how does the audio sound? This is audio on the OnePlus 6T, and this is audio on the OnePlus 5T. Okay, so a few very interesting notes here. First off, that audio recording was pretty horrendous on that 6T. And sure, it was super windy out there, but hey, at least you can slightly hear my voice on the 5T. It's doing a little bit of a better job of noise reduction. Now my second major reaction, just look at how much better and more natural the colors, white balance, and saturation look on the 6T, and they match up with the 5T so much closer. If any of you guys know what's going on here, drop a comment down below. I really wish that the 4K rear facing colors were looking more like this. Anyway, the 1080p looks pretty good and nice dynamic range on both. Though we can clearly see in some spots like the blown out skies on the 5T, whereas in the 6T is able to maintain those blues in the sky, so nice job there. We can't forget a quick slow motion test, and this is actually one big area of difference between these two cameras. The 5T maxes out frames to 40 FPS 720p. The 6T actually has one of my favorite features that very few phones have nowadays, and that's doubling that frame rate up to 480 FPS at 720p. Now we can also shoot higher res at 1080p to 40 FPS. It's nice to have the option. The quick math on this one, one quick second of fast action can be dragged out to 16 seconds of footage on a 30p timeline. That opens up a world of fun and creative slow-mo shots. So here's my closing thoughts. It's semi-common nowadays for advancements in the camera and features to become less and less in each iteration. And I have to give massive kudos to OnePlus for pumping out a new phone every six months. That's very impressive. So let's say you're looking for a budget phone, but you're thinking, well, maybe the old 5T is good enough, or do you need the 6T? Well, in terms of the camera, it doesn't seem to be a world of difference. And for the average person out there, the 5T might be just good enough. However, if you like the features of 4K 60 FPS, uber slow motion, that new low light night mode, well then you might wanna consider that newer 6T model. I honestly really like the OnePlus phones, but I just wish they were a bit more consistent with photography and videos, nailing that autofocus, accurate natural color science, but hey, that new OnePlus 7 is just around the corner, probably around May 2019, so hopefully I can get my hands on one to test and compare for you guys. Now consider subscribing if you haven't already and ring the bell to stay up to date on all my future tech videos I post once or twice every single week. Until next time, let's live all authentic.